My name is Jess Della Andrews, and I am the Faith Formation and Community Care Coordinator at the Road Christian Reform Church in Calgary, Alberta. I'm also currently partway through seminary studies, hoping to one day be ordained, God willing. I want to talk to you about the Human Sexuality Report and its gaps at the table, at who was and who was not invited to sit at or even contribute to this important table of Christian fellowship and discernment. Among many gaps, I want to focus on two main areas, gaps among the study committee makeup and around who it consulted. First, let's talk about gaps at the table among the authors of the report itself. So Synod 2016 appointed this study committee to articulate a foundation laying biblical theology of human sexuality. Then, in a move uncharacteristic of CRC's typical penchant for honest, open, and educated dialogue, an exclusive boundary was enacted around appointment to this committee. Only those in adherence with the CRC's current biblical view on marriage and same-sex relationships were allowed to sit on this committee. Since 1973, Sinan's pastoral advice has been that although homosexual orientation is not sinful, same-sex sexual activity is. So this effectively banned a sizable swath of CRC membership from eligibility to sit on this committee. How big of a swath? Well, for one thing, any faithful Christian in favor of same-sex Christian marriage. According to the 2014 survey by the Calvin College Center for Social Research, that would include 21% of CRC church members, 31% of students, and 14% of ministers. That's one in seven. None of these folks were allowed on the study committee. And remember, these survey results are going on eight years old now, and the numbers have almost certainly increased. Secondly, anyone in faithful and respectful disagreement, or even anyone currently unsure about strict adherence to these principles would also not be eligible. So in effect, a committee was struck to see if there would be any need or any biblical or theological basis to reassess our 50-year-old views on sexuality. But you aren't actually allowed to reassess your view. So who are the people that may have been blocked from this committee? Here are just a few imaginary profiles. Perhaps a committed Christian who is a gay man and in a 10-year covenanted same-sex marriage. Perhaps he even used to be a CRC minister. Perhaps a mother of a non-binary teen who is coming to terms with her child coming out and is now reconsidering her own biblical understanding around sexual ethics. Or maybe a hospital chaplain who is questioning his inherited non-affirming theology after counseling a patient with gender dysphoria. So who was deemed ineligible to sit on this committee? Our own faithful people. People in our churches, our families, our schools. This is not healthy ecclesial process and it is unchristlike. The 12 person study committee also notably lacked younger voices. No one under the age of 40 signed the human sexuality report and the campus ministry representative, perhaps the one most in tune with younger CRC membership and students like myself, left the committee and was then not replaced despite three more years of remaining study. And most importantly, the committee was markedly lacking in LGBTQ plus representation, especially of those in covenanted same-sex relationships or identifying as gender minorities. As such, I feel honestly appalled. How can we even pretend that this has been a fulsome conversation? In Canada, the CRC has a highly respected initiative called Hearts Exchanged. This is designed to equip reformed Christians to engage in learning and reconciliation with indigenous people. And one of its essential teachings is this, no discussion about us without us. This isn't a new maxim. In fact, back in 2016, Synod officially advised, and here I'm quoting from Acts of Synod, page 929, that classes and congregations are to invite 
as much as possible the presence and involvement of same-sex attracted members when dealing with matters that affect the lives and discipleship of same-sex attracted members within the CRCNA. Sadly, it is very clear that the presence of same-sex attracted folks was very limited on this study committee. But what about their involvement? So next, let's consider the gaps at the table in regards to report consultation. Now, I suspect it was really hard to find qualified people with LGBTQ plus representation to sit on this committee. It's a big commitment, five years on a study committee. But if that wasn't possible, then at the very least, the committee must have extensively consulted Christians who identify as gender and sexual minorities, right? No. According to the fourth page of the Human Sexuality Report itself, only four LGBTQ plus people were interviewed. Four! In the five whole years that this study committee was at work. To me, this is the biggest and a very disturbing failure in this whole situation. With all due respect to the study committee, and acknowledging that their task of writing this report must have been extremely weighty and strenuous. This pittance of direct consultation with the real people, with real lived experience and real lives affected is so hurtful. It shows that you have not acted with the due honor nor respect to the weighty responsibility that we gave you. In recent church news, yet again, the CRC is actively excluding LGBTQ plus people from this discussion that is very much about them. This February, the Council of Delegates acting on behalf of Synod effectively reversed its earlier June 2021 decision to make a way for voices of LGBTQ plus Christians to be heard by delegates to Synod 2022. In contrast to inviting the presence and involvement of LGBTQ plus people as much as possible, the Council of Delegates rejected a proposal for listening sessions with videos of LGBTQ plus people sharing their stories in favor of a written appendix of stories. These voices have been marginalized and excluded for years. We have lamented this over and over and over at Synod. Giving them a chance to share by video is not offering an unfair advantage over the written medium of the Human Sexuality Report. Claiming that simply demonstrates a complete blindness to the discrimination experienced by LGBTQ plus Christians in our churches and is a form of ongoing bigotry. If each of us are made in God's image, like the Bible tells us, we are like the facets of a diamond that refract the light at different angles. We each have something to reveal or reflect about our Heavenly Father. And yet, even so, God will always remain an ineffable mystery to our limited human comprehension. May this understanding of our shared humanity, coupled with humility, be what guides our discernment. We are not God. We say we are trying our faithful best, but it is not our best if we are actively, intentionally excluding fellow siblings in Christ's body from his own table. No discussion about us without us. In closing, I want to say this to any people watching 
who identify as gender or sexual minorities. There is much I don't know and can't know, but I will cling to this most sacred biblical truth all my days. You are created in the image of God. Forgive us for trying to be God instead of human, that we would have the gall to name you as disordered when God has called you good. This is an overstep of the scope and call of our humanity to make such a statement about the way our Creator made you. Let us cling to what we can know in our humble estate as humans, that despite our guilt, sin, and woundedness, we are all first and foremost created in the goodness of the image of our God. Now lately, in my home, like many households with young children, the Disney Encanto soundtrack has been playing on repeat. And this is what I see in you, my LGBTQ plus siblings. We see how bright you burn. We see how brave you've been. Now see yourself in turn. You're the real gift. My dear church, what work of the Holy Spirit are we missing out on by failing to acknowledge the good gift of God in our LGBTQ plus siblings in Christ? For many LGBTQ plus in the CRC, it is too late for an invitation to the table. But for others, and for our children, it is never too late.